Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. It is Tuesday, June 2nd, 2015, and I'm Leanne McAdoo. Here's a look at tonight's top stories. Tonight, does the just passed Freedom Act make you feel any freer? Do you think the surveillance state will obey the Fourth Amendment now? Then look at the secret surveillance flights by the FBI using a shell corporation. And gun control advocates dress in prison orange as they beg government to take away freedom. Your freedom. All that and more on tonight's InfoWars Nightly News. Well, the AP today is reporting about surveillance drones that the FBI has been flying across the country. Now, they report that the, the FBI is actually operating a small air force with scores of low-flying planes across the country. These are carrying video and, at times, cell phone surveillance technology. And also that all of this is being hidden behind fictitious shell companies that are fronts for the government. Sounds legit. So, and of course, they also point out that all of this surveillance is going on without a court order. Hmm, who needs the NSA? Now, according to the FBI, the planes aren't equipped for bulk data collection, but they do point out that the planes are able to capture video so they could be uh, capturing video of unrelated criminal activity that's going on that they could use uh, to you know, hand over for future prosecutions. Uh, some of the aircraft can also be equipped with technology that can identify thousands of people below through their cell phones that they're carrying. And they're using Stingray technology, which we reported on is, is often attached to planes. It tricks your cell phone into thinking that it's connecting to Wi-Fi when it's actually connecting to this Stingray device. And they are able to track and um, surveil innocent people. So here we have another conspiracy theory becoming conspiracy fact. Now, the FBI did ask the AP not to release the names of these shell companies because they said the taxpayers will then be saddled with the bill when the government has to create new shell companies to hide all of their activities. And the, APA, uh, the AP declined to acquiesce to that request. They did identify 13 of those shell companies. Now, we did report on... Um, some of the surveillance planes that people were reporting seeing flying above Baltimore just in the days following that rioting there. It was all based on one tweet from a Baltimore resident that said, hey, is anyone noticing these surveillance planes that are going flying around? And then one of his Twitter followers responded with a picture of the plane and its flight path. And that whole tweeting unveiled a previously secret multi-day campaign of overhead surveillance that was being run by city and federal authorities. The FBI said that they did uh, loan those planes to the Baltimore, the city of Baltimore. Now, an independent journalist act actually broke this story about a week ago, and he gave a lot of detail. There was more than 100 planes. Uh, this is Sam Richards, and he reported on more than 100 planes, many of these shell companies. He broke it down quite nicely on a uh, pace bin where he's attached all of this detailed information. So one of his friends spotted one of these surveillance planes over Minneapolis, and that's what prompted him to do this investigation. Um, and you can see there that he mapped about 100 of the aircraft and traced regular flights that they were conducting over major American cities. He outlines how each of the planes is registered to a fake corporation with a three-letter acronym for a name. And he did all this using flight tracking websites. And he, he tracked the airplanes flying over uh, Minneapolis, Dallas, Chicago, Seattle, Baltimore, and others. And so you can see their flight patterns there. The planes will spend several days to a week circling over a given city, and then they're rerouted to another site. So they're not doing a really great job covering up the fact that they are conducting this surveillance over cities because people can check their flight paths there, but any other information that really gives the details of why and what they're doing isn't read readily available to the public. Now, Jay Stanley of the American Civil Liberties Union describes this nightmare scenario uh, for drones. He's basically saying this, is, this right here is leading to our nightmare scenario for drones, which could give wide area mass surveillance and location tracking of entire cities and towns. Now, we're supposed to believe that the NSA's phone snooping program is on its last legs because the Senate passed the USA Freedom Act today. But of course, 
based on what we know, there's a number of programs out there we don't even know about. This is basically sleight of hand convincing us that where our freedom is intact. Uh, the USA Freedom Act rewrites the sweeping Patriot Act. It bans bulk collection of Americans' data and adds more transparency checks to the secret court that oversees intelligence gathering. But based on all this reporting of these surveillance planes, they're already, they've already got all of these programs set up. They don't need permission. They're doing all this without a court order. And we're probably not going to find out about any of these programs unless we have another whistleblower coming out of the system. So all sorts of programs out there that the government is using to bolster the surveillance state. This is a debate over the Bill of Rights. This is a debate over the Fourth Amendment. This is a debate over your right to be left alone. Justice Brandeis said that the right to be left alone is the most cherished of rights. The right to be left alone is the most prized to civilized men. Boston, Chicago, Houston, Washington, D.C., Phoenix, Minneapolis, Seattle, and Southern California. The FBI is watching you illegally. The Stingray device surveillance equipment given a Fourth Amendment pass in order to shield the knowledge of the devices in order to remain secret, according to the FBI, is being used in at least 30 cities in 11 states. So our rights need to be violated in order for them to be protected. The logic unravels immediately. Meanwhile, the FBI is using their increasingly corrupt and Stasi-esque taxpayer-funded spy planes to watch, listen, and record anybody that happens to be in their unconstitutional flight path. And in true mafioso style, the planes were registered with fake companies in order to accomplish their illegal activities unheeded. Of course, nowadays it takes brave citizen journalists like Sam Richards aka Sam Renegade to expose the ugly truth the whitewash media is increasingly dropping the ball on. You know, part of the problem with this issue, Alex, is you have these, these fundamental principles about uh, freedom and privacy and surveillance being couched in very technical questions around, you know, how the bulk data collection works. What, and people can't be expected to understand that. You have to know who to trust. People can't be expected to understand that. You have to know who to trust. Renegade discovered how each of the planes is registered to a fake corporation with a three-letter acronym for a name, such as OBR Leasing, which doesn't seem to otherwise exist as a viable business from internet or public record searches. Richards, aka Renegade, reveals that dozens of these aircraft from front corporations like FVX Research and KQM Aviation are registered at the same Bristow, Virginia post office boxes used for planes which are openly registered to the DOJ. Jay Stanley of the American Civil Liberties Union describes their nightmare scenario. He says, I wrote recently about Argus the high-flying drone technology capable of capturing super high-definition video of a 15-square-mile area and automatically tracking all moving vehicles and people within that area. I pointed out that this makes possible our nightmare scenario for drones, wide-area mass surveillance, and location tracking of entire cities and towns. The FBI claims that they use the flights to assist with local law enforcement like during the Baltimore riots after the death of Freddie Gray. Reports tracked down a pair of planes that circled the city during that time. At the time, the FBI confirmed to the Washington Post that it had provided aircraft for the city's police department for aerial imagery of possible criminal activity. Those flights are what finally spurred the AP investigation. The Wall Street Journal reported last year on a program from the U.S. Marshals Service another wing of the Justice Department, which used the cell phone technology to scoop up information dating as far back as 2007. The FBI recently issued a statement defending their surveillance. It says, The FBI uses all tools and equipment and conducts all investigations in accordance with the Attorney General guidelines. Talk about passing the buck. Would it be too much to ask to just throw the FBI, DEA, CIA, and the current members of Congress on the scrap heap of U.S. history? and start over at this point, it's as plain as the nose on our faces. Justice and corruption mix as well as the BP oil spill. John Bound for Infowars.com. Well, teachers complain and chaos reigns in St. Paul after the school district there spend millions of dollars on white privilege training. 
So the taxpayers there in St. Paul spent nearly $3 million uh, to the group Pacific Educational Group. Now, this is a San Francisco-based organization that's trying to help public schools deal with achievement and disciplinary issues involving black students. Now, it claims that the American education system is built around white culture, tradition, and social norms, also known as white privilege, and this is to the unfair detriment of black students. PEG believes that black students are only going to be able to achieve if school curricula are customized to meet their cultural specifications. It also rejects the concept of using suspensions or expulsions to discipline black students. Um, so basically, they've seen all sorts of program implementation, uh, like moving students with behavioral issues into mainstreamed regular classrooms. Uh, student suspensions were replaced by timeouts and school officials started forgiving or ignoring violence and other unacceptable behavior. So the result has been general chaos throughout the school district. Uh, far too many students are out of control because they know that they have no real consequences for their actions. So this is how students are being, are being taught to, ha to handle the real world, that there are no consequences for your actions. Obviously, this is creating a really unsafe school environment which is causing a lot of families to flee. And according to this report, two thirds of those families are from low income and families of color who are fleeing. So it's not as if, you know, it's a bunch of white people going, oh my gosh, it's so dangerous. These are families who are sick and tired of a, an unsafe school environment for their children. Now, I think that's pretty ridiculous. I mean, we've reported before about how teachers aren't allowed to talk about peanut butter and jelly sandwiches because there are cultures that don't grow up eating peanut butter and jelly sandwiches, but to ignore violence and hitting and things like that, that is when I got to draw the line. Now, the Wall Street Journal is kind of reporting on this rise in crime and sort of ignoring violence and no consequences for people who, who uh, engage in criminal activity. They're touting this as the Ferguson effect. Uh, they're reporting on a startling number of the rise in crime. Uh, it's a new crime wave after two decades of decline. They listed seven cities that have seen noticeable and sometimes shocking spikes in murders and other violent crimes in just the past year. And of these seven cities that were worthy of note, Breitbart is pointing out the fact that all seven of these cities are run by Democrats. And with the exception of New York City, all of these have enjoyed one party rule for decades. So obviously, there is a policy issue there, and that's what they're kind of pointing out. The rise in crime is also, of course, part of the left's Cloward and Piven strategy, which we've reported on time and again. It further empowers central government by stoking despair and fear. And, you know, so what's the left's answer to this? Well, even though Baltimore is, has seen the most violent May in 15 years, gun control advocates are wearing orange today. It's this big hashtag campaign on Twitter. They're wearing orange to promote gun control, which, as we know, the only people who are truly affected by gun control are law-abiding citizens. Uh, because Nearly every player you can see there of the New York Mets baseball team is dressed in orange, uh, you know, don't, never mind the fact that shooting incidents are up 500% in East Harlem there, but, you know, gun laws work. Now, many are pointing out that violent criminals wear orange, too. And they're probably also very likely supporting this decision to disarm Americans. Uh, there's a quote that comes out of this article. It says, the laws that forbid the carrying of arms disarm only those who are neither inclined nor determined to commit crimes. So in other words, a disarmed population is at the mercy of those with arms, just like the prison population is at the mercy of armed guards. So quite fitting that anti-gun activists are going to dress like disarmed prisoners to push gun control. So just like that doesn't make any sense, so too is the notion that the TSA is protecting Americans from terrorism by treating us all like potential terrorists. Well, now, an internal investigation of the TSA has revealed security failures at dozens of airports, uh, the busiest airports in the nation, in fact. Undercover investigators were able to smuggle mock explosives or banned weapons through checkpoints 95% of the time. Now, of course, that's not shocking to those of us who have been reporting for years about the TSA being nothing more than 
Security Theater. In one test, an undercover agent was stopped after setting off an alarm at a magnetometer, but TSA screeners failed to detect a fake explosive device that was taped to his back during a follow-on pat-down. So I don't really know how they missed that because I've been pat down by the TSA before and they get pretty aggressive. So I don't think that, I really don't understand how they could have, you know, they didn't give him the aggressive pat down to miss a an explosive device taped to his back, but they did 95% of the time. Now the head of the TSA has been reassigned because it is nearly impossible to fire a an employee of the federal government. So now he's just been reassigned so that he can be wholly ineffective in another department of the government. Now the TSA was put in place after 9-11 to protect our freedoms. So they have to strip away our freedoms. A very perplexing logic, just like saying, you know, to keep us safe, we need to be disarmed. So the only people who can have guns are the criminals. Well, now 14 years later, Rand Paul is joining the fight to release these 28 pages, release the secret 9-11 documents. Now, these 28 pages of documents are thought to contain information that relates to direct involvement by Saudi Arabia and senior figures there in the Saudi Arabian government. Um, at a Capitol press conference today, Paul said, we cannot let page after page of blanked out documents be obscured by a veil. Information revealed over the years does raise questions about Saudi Arabia's support or whether their support might have been supported to these Al Qaeda terrorists. Senator was surrounded by families of victims of the terror attacks, as well as other lawmakers who are campaigning for these documents to be made public. Now, Paul has introduced legislation. It's called Transparency for the Families of 9-11 Act. And this would force the Obama administration to disclose the pages which were extracted from a congressional inquiry into these attacks in 2002 and it was made secret by the Bush government. Now, former Senator Bob Graham, who helped oversee the congressional inquiry, is adamant that there is a Saudi-related cover-up there, and CNN also reported in February that the 28 pages focus on the role of foreign governments in the plot, and Representative Walter Jones, he said he doesn't understand if these pages were just made secret because it might somehow be embarrassing to the Bush administration and how close they were to the Saudi family. So that's definitely in there. But of course, those of us who have been questioning 9-11 in the official story all of these years, we know all of this. It's, it's really nothing new. Yes, uh, Alex, thanks. Uh, well, the, the uh, press conference was at 10 o'clock today, uh, the Senate uh, uh, Congressional Visitors uh, Center. And uh, Senator Paul led off the uh, press conference uh, announcing his uh, support for a Senate bill to uh, basically urge uh, the president uh, to declassify the 28 pages from the joint congressional report of 2002 on the failures of 9-11. And joining Senator Paul were uh, former uh, Senator Bob Graham from Florida, who was the actual chairman of the Senate and Intelligence Committee, who has, uh, of course, read those 28 pages, uh, was uh, the last final chop authority on those 28 pages uh, with the rest of the report. Uh, and he uh, urged, uh, and he has been urging uh, uh, the White House, I know he's visited the White House and urged them to declassify uh, the pages. Uh, uh, and um, uh, Senator Paul uh, announced that he has two uh, co-sponsors for uh, this Senate uh, bill uh, that would uh, declassify the 28 pages, and they are uh, Senator Ron Wyden, Democrat of Oregon, and Senator Kristen, uh, Kirsten Gillibrand, I should say, of uh, New York. And um, uh, he said if uh, uh, he's also planning on uh, uh, attaching this bill as an amendment to the Defense Authorization Act next week. So Incredible. There, there are two avenues to get this uh, get this through. On the House side, uh, we had uh, Representative uh, Jones, uh, Representative Lynch, and Representative Massey speak. Uh, what we heard from both uh, Senator Paul and uh, the congressmen from the House side uh, are that they have resistance uh, from the uh, bipartisan leadership in both houses on the, uh, getting uh, this through. They, they have very few co-sponsors, and it's quite clear that the leadership 
uh, and that's Mitch McConnell in the uh, Senate and John Boehner, the House Speaker, and and various chairmen of uh, various committees are just uh, trying their darndest to uh, uh, to block this effort. And um, uh, Senator Paul made something uh, made an interesting comment during his presentation. He said that uh, the Saudi government uh, has expressed support for rele- releasing the 28 pages. So I asked him a question at the press conference: uh, Who in the Saudi government? would be in favor of that because the present King Salman uh, was the governor of Riyadh province before 9-11. And I understand from talking to uh, Saudi opposition forces, and these are democratic opposition forces, that um, uh, several al-Qaeda members passed through Riyadh when, when Salman was governor of Riyadh on their way to Pakistan and Afghanistan. And they uh, were given uh, logistical support, cash, and a whole lot of uh, support by the present king of Saudi Arabia. Yeah, that sounds like in a movie when the guy has a dead body in this trunk. And he says, sure, search my car, just trying to play a confidence game. We know from different folks we've had on, like Springman and others, from the visa section in Jeddah, that they were basically ordered by the CIA to let the 15 of the 19 hijackers in, even though they were flagged as terrorists. But when I get excited about Rand Paul, it's for this reason. He comes out, he points out that they've lied to us about spying on us. He points out it's not been used to stop terror. He points out that we've been helping fund ISIS. He brings up the fact that, hey, Saudi Arabia was allowed in 9-11. Don't claim I'm against national security. Release the information. He really seems to be in their face right now. Uh, A lot of politicians are saying, we don't like your strategy. You're not playing it safe. You know, you're going to lose now for doing this. It doesn't matter. He's doing the right thing. And it shows how alien that is to the mindset in Washington. What do you make of what Rand Paul's doing and taking a leadership role in this? Well, uh, he had, uh, you know, I've I've covered the politics here for a while. And to hear a a Democrat like Bob Graham, uh, former governor of Florida and a uh, longtime uh, Democratic senator, was the chairman of the um, Senate Intelligence Committee, was actually thanking and praising uh, Rand Paul for his efforts, as, as were uh, the, the uh, members from the House side, uh, including uh, Democratic uh, Congressman uh, Stephen Lynch from Massachusetts. I mean, it... it- it, it smells and looks like old-fashioned statesmanship and actually trying to have a free country. Yeah, I, I, I was uh, somewhat uh, surprised to see a spirit of bipartisanship at that press conference today. I should also add that there was a, a, Virgin, a Republican Virginia state senator in the audience, and he has uh, also proposed a resolution urging uh, the, the 28 pages. Uh, you know, that's just a sense of the uh, – that would be a sense of the Virginia Senate uh, they don't have any authority over that type of thing, but he's introduced a similar uh, resolution in the Virginia Senate. Now, earlier this year, I predicted more feminist fails for 2015, but the feminists might just be winning on this one to the detriment of us all. Find out what I'm talking about coming up next. Earlier this year, I predicted more feminist fails for 2015. And one of those really stupid feminist causes was the issue of manspreading. Well, it turns out the feminists, ugh, they're winning on this one so far as two men have been arrested for manspreading in New York. Yes, sitting with your legs slightly too far apart, as it used to be known, has apparently become a criminal offense. Now, rather than simply throwing out these charges, the judge issued an order that only guarantees that these men won't suffer any further repercussions if they avoid getting arrested again in the near future. Now, the term manspreading was coined by feminist bloggers who started tracking this antisocial behavior on public transport, but it has reached the real world, too, and so it's been banned in New York and Seattle. (laughs) Goodness, it's so insane. But this has prompted a counter movement, counter shaming called she bagging. And this is, you know, all in the name of equality. Twitter users are now shaming women who take up an extra seat with a handbag, a shopping bag, dog, or plants, all sorts of things. So this is what it has come to is just arresting people for not being aware of personal space, not being polite. 
And, you know, if you scroll down there, you can see some of the men that are caught manspreading are giants. They don't even fit in one seat on the plane. But here, this lady's taken up three seats. So, you know, this is what it's come to. The policy is, it's most likely going to be used to harass people and just, you know, be an excuse to harass people, most likely minorities, so they can say, oh, sorry, you were manspreading. It's, uh, you know, the land of the free, home of the brave, right? Uh, land of the fee, home of the slave, I believe they call it now. But the kids that today, they're not just being conditioned to fear any triggers and hide in their safe spaces. They are also being prepared to be the cyborgs of tomorrow. Now, Disney and Marvel have unveiled their latest new wearable toys that Playmations will first roll out uh, slated for October. So Playmations first rollout includes a wearable Iron Man inspired repulsor that kids can strap to their arm as well as two power activators which will presumably activate powers and two smart figures. Now Disney's goal here is to untether the experience from consoles and specific locations and let kids and adults play by wandering around, running, jumping and exploring. And, you know, maybe they'll even attach them to virtual headsets soon. Back in my day, we used to call that playing, playing outdoors. So here we have toys that are basically turning children into Iron Man. And it actually sounds pretty awesome. But I think that that's the point. Because, you know, once you get addicted to these wearables, then you're going to have to get your brain chip upgrades to enhance the experience. Now, stay tuned. We're going to have a very important Fukushima update from Alex Jones. Alex Jones here with a very important Fukushima update. Well, almost five years has passed since the tragic events that took place in 2011 north of Tokyo, Japan in a province known as Fukushima. Of the six reactors damaged by the tsunami and the subsequent earthquake, five partially or totally exploded. And one of the key reactors that was actually a plutonium reactor, even more dangerous than the traditional uranium reactor, the MOX core system completely exploded with a giant hydrogen chain reaction. We had scientists on at the time who were able to study the isotopes and confirmed that indeed a fission chain reaction had taken place. Now, quite frankly, there is no silver bullet to protect yourself from radiation. The Northern Hemisphere of our planet has double to triple, depending what time of year we're looking at, of the Southern Hemisphere, simply because most nuclear disasters from Chernobyl to Fukushima and nuclear testing have taken place in the Northern Hemisphere. This is quite frankly insane. But it was four, four and a half years ago that I began to really research radiation poisoning and things that were happening around the world so that I could try to mitigate what was happening to myself and my family. Because we had the reports from Connecticut uh, on the East Coast and uh, places in California and other areas of increased radioactive isotopes uh, in cow's milk because they were eating on the surface uh, of the grass where it was bioaccumulating. It was showing up in higher levels in tuna off California. And the media was saying it was no big deal. Now higher levels of radiation is supposedly okay for you. Well, now the International Business Times, RT and others are reporting that there are over 200 plus containers at the wreck facility where five of the reactors were damaged, several totally exploded, that are filled with spent fuel rods and that are building up hydrogen again that could cause massive explosions. Each one of them could end up being bigger than what we saw back in 2011. This is simply insane. The entire facility on the edge of the ocean, because of the water they're dumping on it to keep it cool down, the radioactive rods that are heating up, is causing the whole facility to sink into the ground. Bottom line, Fukushima is only gonna get worse. So I began to do research. And as I said back in a clip a few years ago, short of moving to the Southern Hemisphere, there's really nothing you can do other than 
protecting the tissues and the cells that we already have in our bodies. And nothing is a silver bullet, but the best thing you can do overall that from my research gives the thyroid and other glands some modicum uh, of a defense is things like high quality nascent iodine.